Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 5 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 21, Phone Call, Scene, Yasaka Castle, an hour goes by as Issei lays in bed. Yasaka is curled up on one side with her arms wrapped around one of Issei's. She is doing this while Kunuo was snuggling with one of the fox's many tails. On the other side of the bed, Kuroka is practically copying Yasaka's posture, with Issei's other arm in hers. Awake and unable to fall back asleep, Issei wondered what time it was as this room had no windows to speak of. Then thoughts of his recent dream came into mind. Mom, Dad, I don't want to worry you. I need you to know that I'm okay and, Issei looks at Yasaka, then at Kuroka. Well, I would love to introduce them at some point. Issei begins to blush. What am I thinking? Assuming anything at this point would be stupid. Yasaka stirs a bit which draws Issei out of his own mind. Looking down at the blonde woman, the teen is met with beautiful, yet sleepy, golden eyes, which glow slightly in the dimlit room. Yasaka can see that Issei has rosy cheeks and an innocent look of love. Stunned by the waking beauty, Issei nervously smiles. Whispering, Issei speaks up. Yasaka-sama, I am so very sorry for the trouble. Risking so much, you take me away from a very bad place. You then bring me here. And now, I trouble you further with, well, I don't know the word for it, so, let's just call her, Ophis. It seems as though you have been dealing with nothing trouble since my arrival. I haven't had a chance to speak with you alone like this for a bit, so, I thought I should tell you that I am truly grateful for everything. Slowly sitting upward, the smiling fox continues to nod occasionally through Issei's banter. Issei was about to continue but Yusaka had enough in place to finger over the boy's mouth. Widening his eyes at this action, Yusaka then began to speak in a soft and quiet tone. Era, Era, Issei, please stop. You have nothing to thank me for. And I won't hear of any more prostrating coming from you. Well, at least in regards to that subject. Yusaka giggles with a very slight and almost unnoticeable grin. This lasts only moments before the fox clears her throat. Issei wasn't keen to pick up on this, however Dedrag was. Hmm, should I tell my partner that this fox has a femdom sort of aura coming from her? Dedrag thinks for a moment. Boob dragon, boob dragon, no, I ain't saying shit. He will find out on his own and from the looks of it, I don't think that it will be very long, wahahaha. Issei feels the need to sneeze, however it passes. Yusaka continued as she removed her finger from the boy's mouth. Yes, well, it makes me happy that you've accepted our home as your own. Smiling, Issei wants to ask something, however he doesn't want to come off as rude or pretentious. Yusaka is able to notice the apprehension and speaks up, softly. Issei-san, having this overwhelming feeling that Yusaka was onto him, the teen relented and replied. Yusaka-sama, is there a way I can speak to my parents? You have done so much already, but I just need them to know that I am alright. Maybe just a phone call or something like that. Taking a deep breath, Yusaka was happy to know that Issei was only worried about something as innocent as wanting to speak with his mother and father, rather than something else. Sitting all the way up, the fox Yukai places both of her hands on Issei's cheeks and pulls his forehead to hers. Not knowing what was going on, Issei just looked back into those golden eyes. I have a way in which you can speak with your loving family without it being tracked. It is a form of senjutsu that allows one to project their inner form, from one area, to another. Essentially, you will be standing in front of your parents and they will see you. The only downside is that you will be unable to hug or touch them. Would that be acceptable, Hyodo Issei-san? With his head feeling soft blonde hair and furry ears, Issei smiles. Thank you Yusaka, yes, I gladly accept. The golden eyes of the fox queen sparkle as the woman begins a mantra spell. Scene, Hyodo residence. In the main living room, Akino, Kiba, Gasper, Ravel, Irina, Zenovia, Roswise, Kaneko and Asia were sitting in their usual respective areas. Couches, chairs and even the floor, all sat quietly as they watched a rerun of, Opai Dragon Adventures vs Milky Chan. Then the sound of footsteps coming from the staircase grabbed everyone's attention. That was until the ex-peerage noticed it was just Issei's parents. They seemed very happy. Then Ms. Hyodo spoke to her husband. 
I am so glad he is doing well. He seems happy. Mr. Hyodo replies, I know. But it's strange, don't you think? I mean, him just showing up like that, in our room just now. At those words, the television was then turned off. Issei's parents noticed the instant silence from the living room and turned their heads towards said living room. Nine pairs of eyes were staring back. The Hyodos then look at one another then back at the ex peerage Can we help you guys? Mr. Hyodo had a worried look on his face. Kiba stands up and replies. Mr. Hyodo, we couldn't help but hear you say that you just spoke with Issei in your bedroom. Without trying to come off as rude or nosy, I still must ask. Mr. and Ms. Hyodo look around the room and see different reactions and emotions on everyone, especially the girls. Both Hyodos nod as the father continues to speak. Well, Kiba-san, yes indeed, we just now spoke with our son, in our room, mind you. Though, I admit, it's strange the way he showed up. Pretty sure he must have climbed a tree and gone through our window or something toward that effect. Issei's mother nods, yes, he seemed to be in a hurry as well, but gave us his best regardless. Honestly, I feel better knowing he is seeing the world like that. The ex peerage is gobsmacked. Chapter 22, Fellow Inpatient, Scene, Yasaka Castle, Thank you so much Yasaka. I am glad my parents are doing well. This is all thanks to you. Thank you. Issei instinctively hugs Yasaka however he doesn't notice the instant blush on the fox's face. Yasaka originally had the boy in a position in which she stood above him while he was kneeling, thus the hug was exactly the way the fox queen liked it. After a moment of Issei's very tight hug, the boy realized two things. The first of two was simple, it was hard to breathe. The second came in a wave of feelings regarding multiple senses. The wonderful smell of fresh cherry blossoms was incredibly inviting. This feeling was followed up with the physical sense of touch which involved softness and warmth. Then it came to him. I am hugging Yasaka Sanzo Pai. Looking up, Issei once again sees a pair of golden and slightly glowing eyes. Surrounding those eyes was a bright pink color as Yasaka's blush took over her entire face. A crescent-shaped smile adorned the fox queen as her eyes focused into Issei's. Not knowing what to do at this point, Issei proceeds to stealthily release his hold. This does not go unnoticed as Yasaka's smile turned into a grin. At that moment, Issei felt two arms embrace the back of his head. We pan out seeing the same room as before. On the bed, Kuroka and Kuno are sleeping away. On the floor near the bed, we see a kneeling Issei being embraced by a standing Yasaka. Aside from the cute snores coming from Kuno, we can hear a mumbling and muffled sound coming from the chest of the Fox Queen. Scene, Grimori Estate, are you certain? Kiba nods while replying to a communication circle that was red in color. Yes, Sears ex Sama, both of Issei's. Parents were quite adamant about seeing their son, not a few minutes ago. The circle pulses a bit and a reply comes through. Very well, I will notify those who need to know. Also, I will be sending a small contingency of allied individuals to aid you in your search for Issei. I can't order any of you to help in this endeavor however, Kiba interrupts as he stands at attention. Sirzex, pardon my interruption, however I must interject. Multiple hands coming from random peerage members start to grasp Kiba's shoulder in support. Looking back at Akino, Irina, Zenobia and Ravel, Kiba nods and winks. Go ahead, the summoning circle pulsed. Mao Sirzex, I think I can speak for everyone that was in Rias's peerage, with that, you don't even need to ask. When it comes to Issei, my brother, our family, you, you don't have to ask. So, please, don't act like we aren't family either. Kiba begins to break down in tears. I'm sorry, I try to be the strong one of the group and I hold it and hold it, but, I can't do it forever, Akino grabs Kiba and holds him into a tight hug. Ravel nods and steps over toward the circle. Sirzex, just let us know what you need done. On the other end of the communication circle, in the underworld, we can see Sirzex sitting in a chair. She has a very proud smile with a single tear dripping from her eye. Kiba, you're a good boy. You've done more than enough, far more than anyone could have asked. Please, if you ever need anything from me, say something. Also, Ravel, yes, Erm, yes, I will. Speaking of which, well, no, I suppose we can talk about that another time, right now, Issei, 
Yes, let's focus on Issei. All right, in about 15 minutes or so, prepare for some company. That is all, and, thank you. The communication circle dissipates in a silent large room. Kiba is sobbing into Akino's neck as she has a hand over the back of the boy's blonde hair. I'm sorry, I've tried and tried, but damn it, Akino interrupts, it's fine Kiba, let it out sweetheart. Scene, Drive, Kellogg's Insane Asylum, Underworld. In a cafeteria of sorts, we can see our favorite red-headed switch princess. Eating what looks to be oatmeal, Rias seems to be staring off into nowhere. Then, the woman feels a creaking to her side. Turning her head, another person seemed to sit down right next to her. Hello friend, my name is Kateria. You must be new here. What's your name, dear? The strange person who sat next to Rias was a brown-haired female. Her hair was long and tied back. She also wore the same patient garbs that Rias was wearing. Aside from her large and square pink glasses, all seemed normal. That was until Rias played the name back in her mind a few times. Issei, 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 wait, she said her name was Kateria, hum. Kateria, Kateria, Issei, Issei, no, 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 Kateria, wait. Rias stands from her bench seat and points at the new woman. Kateria Leviathan, the brown-haired woman smiles and adjusts her glasses. The one and only, the now known, Kateria Leviathan, grins. A flashback of the past runs through Rias's mind. The attack at the peace conference. The declaration of war against the new malfactions. She was killed though, she can't be here. Shaking her head of her thoughts, Rias then speaks up. Well, if you are indeed Kateria Leviathan, then you should know who I am. The woman in glasses slowly nods. I just wanted to be polite and formal. But yes, Rias Grimori, I know exactly who you are. Rias then releases a large breath of air and relents. Sitting back down, Rias goes back to her meal. Giggling a bit, Kateria asks, aren't you even going to ask how I survived? Rias shakes her head no. Does it really matter? Kateria then shrugs. I'll tell you about it some other time, considering we have nothing but time in this. Forsaken Place. Chapter 23. Okay. Scene, Hyodo Residence. Knock knock knock, Akino nods at Kaneko as she walks toward the front door. Meanwhile Xenovia, Irina and Ravel are following the Nako with their eyes. Kiba quieted down a bit as Akino slowly let the team go. Smiling warmly, the ex-queen speaks. To be honest, Kiba, I was wondering when you would really open up again. To my pleasant surprise, you expressed your feelings to all of us and it was a good, great thing. So it will be fine. We are always here, Kiba, we are your family after all. Kiba wipes his face, smiles and then nods. Then, both the knight and queen look toward the front door. Before the door was opened, a small person came running down the top of the staircase. Did I miss anything, Issei Senpei, has anything happened? Finishing his sentence as he zipped down the final step and into the living room, Gasper had a worried yet excited look as he sported a half smile. Kaneko looks behind her as if she was mildly startled by Gasper's random appearance but then smiles a bit while turning back toward the door. Knock 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 knock, rolling her eyes, the Nako opens the door. Stepping through the door without an invitation was no other than Riser Phoenix. Out of the way, dwarf. Scene, Gregory. No shit, hell yeah, I knew that kid couldn't just up and die. The red dragon emperor kid always finds a way to beat the odds. Azazel can be seen leaning back on his lazy boy comfy chair. He has both of his arms stretched out as he is doing some sort of celebration stance while laying backward. The communication circle that floats next to the fallen angel's ear now pulses red. It is strange though, the moment Rius's evil pieces stopped producing a signature, it could only mean that they were removed. Obviously in normal circumstances, that would equal a slow and painful death. Again, in normal situations, but Issei is anything but normal, as we've seen in the past. Azazel nods in his chair while lighting up a cigarette. The governor has a warm smile that changes to a proud and toothy grin as he speaks up. You know, Sirzex, I really love that kid. The circle remains still for a moment, then it begins to pulse. Azazel, can I ask you a question? Sitting upward as he uses the arm lever on his chair to switch from bed mode to sit mode, Azazel puts on his serious face. What's up, kiddo? 
Sears X responds. Do you think that Issei? Well, this is embarrassing, but, well, you've spent time with him, a lot more than I have, and, Azazel nods and then speaks up. Spit it out, Lucifer. The red glow from the communication circle vibrates a bit and then begins to pulse as normal. Issei, do you think he would accept me? In place of, R. Rius. I mean, I want him. I've wanted him for a long time. Graphia also feels the same way. Azazel, I love Issei. Choking on his cigarette, the fallen angel now puts out his smoke in an ashtray and grabs his nearby glass of scotch and chugs it. Kcsiha ehem, right, okay, ehem, excuse me, slapping his own face with one of his hands, Azazel attempts to clear a plethora of thoughts invading his mind at the moment. So, I suppose the question of the year would be, does he say no? Scene, Yasaka Castle, we slowly pan into a beautiful scene. A large and very well-maintained Japanese-style garden envelopes the backyard of this large estate. Under a large cherry blossom tree, we can see three figures. Two females are kneeling next to a laying boy. Yasaka, Kuroka and Issei look to be involved in some type of ritual. A purple glow coming from the hands of the Nekomata and an equally brilliant blue and fiery glow radiate from the arms of the fox Yukai. They are doing this over a lying Issei who has his eyes closed. Era, Era, you are doing very well. Continue to lay still for a while longer. Yasaka has her signature crescent-shaped smile present on her beautiful lips. A smiling Kuroka then speaks up. NYA, don't worry, Red Dragon, you will get used to this in time. Issei remains still. However, he speaks quietly while barely moving his own lips. I am grateful. I just wish this didn't involve inconveniencing two beautiful ladies, just to keep me alive. Yasaka's blue flames begin to crackle a bit. Nonsense. I won't hear of this. After Yasaka raised her voice, Issei did something that surprised and disturbed the two women. With his eyes still closed, the boy made a sudden shrieking sound as he flinched, he did this while raising both of his hands while covering his head. If this were another scenario, Issei would look to be defending himself from an oncoming attack or something extreme toward that end. Yasaka extinguishes her flames and reaches for Issei's head in panic. Kuroka does the exact same thing at the same time. Before they are able to touch Issei, he flinches again which causes the two girls to hold their advances. Screaming out from behind both of his hands, which were covering the boy's face I, 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 will, I will, I will not die for you. Chapter 24 Say that you love me. Scene, Yasaka Castle, Backyard Garden. Laying on the grass, under the large cherry blossom tree, we can see Issei. Yasaka and Kuroka are both on their knees with their hands retracted. Both with looks of worry and utter grief, the women watched in horror as Issei moved his arms from his face. His eyes were wide with fear as he looked at both women. Trying to crawl away from them, Issei yelled out a multitude of things, very disturbing things. Get, get back, fuck you, don't you touch me, don't you ever touch me. As if Issei had become a feral dog, he was practically growling at the two terrified women as he backed away in fear. As his back finally met the large trunk on this beautiful and pink-colored tree, the boy jumped and looked behind him. Shortly after, the boy returns his flighty stare at both women. Kuroka knew something was clearly off with Issei. This looked so familiar to her. Remembering how long it took her to allow others to get close again, after all of the terrible tortures she endured by her ex-master, Kuroka could easily see the signs in Issei, the signs of some serious post-traumatic stress disorder. Deciding to act quickly, the Nako screamed out, Dedrag! Dedrag! Wake up you stupid red dragon! Issei is hallucinating. Gaining Issei's attention after the attempt to get the boy's sacred gear to respond, the brown-haired teen heard something completely different coming from Kuroka's lips. Seen, Issei's POV. It was just a love tap. There is no need to overreact like this, my cute pawn. Rias Gramori put both of her hands on her hips while taping her foot while waiting for a response. I said I fucking hate you. I won't do it anymore. First she kills me, then you pretty much did the same thing. Issei now points at the other woman who was kneeling on the grass, next to Rias. Rainair now points at herself as she grins. You know it, baby. I killed you with my love. In the form of a light spear, well, several hee hee. 
Rock and roll. Rainer now puts a hand over her mouth and laughs hysterically. Issei puts his hand down while scowling at the fallen angel. You know what? I think I get it. You won't stop. You won't ever stop. I am dead in this. This is hell. The irony is absolutely hilarious. The brown-haired teen now collapses with his back still against a large tree. Now sitting and slumped over in a defeated posture, Issei then begins to sob quietly. Both Rias and Rainer are joined in a maniacal laugh as they point at Issei. Rias then throws another stab at the poor and vulnerable teen. Ha 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 ha. Ah, my poor little perverted pawn is now sad. Maybe we've gone a bit too far. I know, I have an idea. Rias begins to take her shirt off while smirking. Would my little perverted slave like to cuddle with his master's boobs? Yeah, a perverted pig like you would love that. Maybe if you stop whining like a little bitch, Rainer might get in on this too. Wouldn't you like that, piggy? Issei simply looks at the grass he slumps on. His bangs were covering his face, however tears were clearly falling. Scene, normal POV. Yasaka is now holding Kuroka's hand as they are watching Issei hug his knees and mumble incoherent nonsense. His language seemed to regress into something that one might compare to a drug-induced ramble. The fox and the Nako both had tears of their own. They knew that Issei was seeing the two people he feared the most, instead of them. Yasaka then reached for Issei however her hand was swiftly slapped away. Still with his head down, the boy somehow managed to sense the fox trying to touch him. As if his body was in some sort of auto-defense mode, Issei placed the arm he used to slap the fox, back and around his knees as if nothing had happened. Holding her red hand, Yusaka was not expecting something to this extreme. This frustrated her because she wanted nothing more than to wrap the damaged red dragon in all nine of her golden fox tails. She wanted to hold him close and never let him go. Kuroka on the other hand was concerned that even Dedrag was non-responsive. Was Issei somehow blocking the sacred gear from working? The ground began to shake ever so slightly. The blue sky began to change into a violet color. Kuroka and Yusaka look around until they spot a black hole. Quite literally, there was a hole and it was black. It formed 60 or so feet, directly above where Issei was sitting. After a pulse of violet energy, a head pops out. The head belongs to no other than Ophis. Emerging from this black hole, upside down, the head of Ophis now had the body it belonged to, as the Ouroboros dragon finally fully emerged. She then flipped right side up and dropped her rather, dived toward Issei. Yusaka and Kuroka were both concerned as Ophis's descent was rather fast. Chapter 25, Pretend That You Love Me. Scene, Yusaka Castle, Backyard Garden. Boing. The diving Ouroboros dragon seemed to instantly stop her descent as she landed both of her feet on the top of a sitting Issei's head. Ophis now puts up two peace signs as her arms are extended outwards while she attempts a very cute pose. Still standing on top of Issei's head, Ophis now puts both of her arms out as she attempts to balance herself. This happens because the brown-haired teen tilted his head a bit. Having enough of this nonsense, the hallucinating red dragon emperor stands up and attempts to grab whatever was standing on his head. Reaching for what was no longer there, as Ophis seemed to have vanished, Issei places both of his arms at his sides as he stands up straight while his bangs cover his face. Yusaka and Kuroka are looking around the garden, trying to see where the tall and black-haired woman vanished to. Then their attention went back to Issei as the team began to speak in a voice that was partnered with the voice of a dragon. Welch Dragon Balance Breaker. Gasping. Both women placed their arms over their eyes as the garden was enveloped by a mix of green and red energies. As the smoke clears, we see the red dragon emperor in his trademark scale mail. He then raises his head which reveals green and glowing orbs. The large appendage toward his back, his tail, begins to slap at the air in agitation. In that same voice where it sounded like a mix of Issei and Dedrag, the red-scaled emperor speaks. I, I warned, you, but you just wouldn't ease up. Fine, if I need to destroy this hell along with the rest of you, then so be it. Rias, Rainer, the red dragon now looks upward, spotting another woman. Sirzex. Issei now points at Ophis who is floating in the air with her head tilted as she points at herself in confusion. No more. You hear me. Fuck off. All of you. A -w 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 -h 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 -h. Placing his left arm in the air, the red dragon emperor begins his chant. 
I, who am about to awaken? Yasaka, Kuroka and even Ophis widen their eyes. Scene, Kyoto residence. We see a great deal of people in the living room. They are taking up all of the available spaces including the floor, which Ravel and Kaneko were sitting on. Azazel was sitting next to Riser and Bally. He had another fallen angel standing behind the couch with a notepad in her hand. This was no other than Penemu, as she seemed to be jotting down some notes with a black ink pen. On another couch, we can see Issei's parents alongside Akino, Irina and Kiba. Gaspar was sitting on a loveseat with Zigovia and Asia. Azazel began to speak. So, looks like we are all here, so I will get down to it. Issei, we all have our own reasons for wanting to find the kiddo. Don't worry, we don't have to get into that for now. Long story short, all of us in this room will be entering as a team in the Opai Dragon Hunt. The entire room, minus Riser, Valley and Penemu all gasp. Ravel points her finger at her brother with a scowl and yells. Why is this Baka here? He hates Issei. Riser points at himself with a frown. Well, that's a good question, little sis. Let's just say that the brat has grown on me a bit. Also, mom and dad want me to help out with, well with you know what. Ravel turns pink and nervously smiles while waving her hands in the air. That's enough, Onisama. Riser smiles. But if he calls me brother-in-law or something stupid like that, he will get a fat lip. Ravel nervously giggles, be quiet, brother. But, thanks. Riser nods and points at himself with more vigor. Riser is a hero, Riser knows this. Worry not sis, Riser will get your weak little dragon back from whomever took him. Penemu blushes, Riser, you are such a good boy. Riser looks back at the fallen angel and grins. Riser will get more than just hot chocolate from this hottie. Meanwhile Penemu is thinking to herself. What a kind-hearted and simple little soul. Even with his mental challenges, he manages to do the right thing. Very admirable. Scene, Yusaka Castle, Backyard Garden. Before Issei was able to get another word out, black hands jetted from the ground he was standing on. These were the same arms that saved him from his fever dream. Long and black appendages that sported equally long fingers that reached out for the boy, the dragon had no chance to react as they were already and infinitely wrapped around his entire body. Slowly descending from the sky, Ophis maintained a stoic look however her body language looked as though she had an internal struggle of her own. The red-scaled emperor attempted to struggle however he did stop the chant. Small waves of violet energy started to pulse from the ground and into the black arms that were wrapped tightly around Issei. Then the energy waves made their way toward the boy and were absorbed instantly as this purple light seemed to penetrate the thick armor that Issei was clad in. What? What is? What is this? In two voices, the emperor seemed to calm his thrashing and submit to his prison. Then, Issei said one more word. Warm. At that moment, Issei's armor vanished into red and crystal-like particles. Looking at the woman who floated down next to him, Issei smiles and then begins to cry. I. I thought, Issei takes his time to get good luck at the three women in the garden. You were all different people just now, Rias, Sirzex and Rainer. Issei then looks down at himself as he is covered in black. Realizing that he went out of control once again, Issei shudders. Looking back up at Ophis, the boy begins to break down. I didn't know, I, I am sorry, I didn't mean to. As Issei attempts to lower his head in shame, Warm hands hold his head back up as she looks into Issei's glassy and watery eyes. Fred not broken one, for I shall save you. I will fix you. Issei looks into those gray eyes as it entranced his very soul. Slowly, the black appendages release their hold and sink back into the voids below them. Issei then instinctively does something he didn't know he could ever do. Something that he would never take the initiative for. Issei reaches forward while closing his eyes. Kisu, now, a tall woman in black is holding a shaking teen as he kisses her in a long and loving kiss. Yasaka and Kuroka both have jealous looks on their faces as they scowl at the scene in front of them. The evening prior, both girls, Fox and Nako, had a secret bet that was placed between them. The woman who could get Issei to kiss them first, that same woman would be considered the alpha in Issei's future harem. Submitting in defeat, both Yasaka and Kuroka looked at each other while shaking their heads in disappointment. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one got in my storage.